Use only equations of motion to calculate the value of T1 indicated on the graph. Well, what is happening here? We, had a, we have a hot air balloon which is moving downwards with a velocity of 3.4 meters per second. Well, a constant velocity of 3.4 meters per second. And what happens is that a ball is dropped with an initial velocity of 0 meters per second. And then it strikes the ground and bounces off the ground. And here, this position time graph is for the motion of the ball. And what we are supposed to do is to calculate the value of T1 indicated on the graph. So T1 would be the time taken for the ball for, to travel from the instant it is dropped from the hot air balloon until it strikes the ground. So that is T1. So let's take a look at the information we have for that part of the motion. Obviously, VI, even though it is being dropped, it was on a hot air balloon which had a constant velocity. So its velocity would be that of the hot air balloon at 3.4 meters per second downwards. And then acceleration, obviously, now it is in free fall after being dropped. So we're going to have 9.8 meters per second squared downwards. Another information we have is the displacement, delta y, because t1 is when the ball strikes the ground. So there we go, we have delta y. What else do we have? We're interested on the time, so delta t is what we're looking for. So with these four variables, should be quite obvious what we need to do. Delta y is equal to vi delta t plus a half acceleration delta t squared. I have delta y, I have vi, I have the acceleration. I'm looking for delta t. But as you can see here, we're going to solve the quadratic equation. And I always run away from that for some reason. So let me not use this equation. Instead, I'm going to find vf first so that I can use vf is equal to vi plus a delta t. Let me show you how. I'm going to say that vf squared is equal to vi squared plus q a delta y. I'm going to end up using two equations just because I don't want to solve a quadratic equation. But uh, vf squared will be equal to vi, which is minus 3.4. We're taking the upper positive. Plus 2, the acceleration is nine minus 9.8, and the displacement is minus 15. So vf is going to be equal to. So I'm going to put that in my calculator and take square roots at the same time. So plus q multiplied by minus 9.8 multiplied by minus 15. I'm getting 17.4803 meters per second. So this is my VF. Now that I have VF, I'm going to say VI is equal to VF, not VI. VF is equal to VI plus A delta T. So there we go. Uh, VF is minus 17.4803. It is on its way downwards at that instant. And then VI minus 3.4. Acceleration minus 9.8 delta T. So delta T will be equal to minus 17.4803 plus 3.4. Everything divided by minus 9.8. So now I just need to put that in my calculator. So minus 17.4803 plus 3.4, everything divided by 9.8. Well, minus 9.8. I'm getting delta T is equal to 1.44 seconds. So there we go. That is the value of T1. T1 is equal to 1.44 seconds. And then the next question, we are, we are interested in the height of the hot air balloon above the ground at the instant where the ball strikes the ground okay let's take a look at that question so as the ball is moving downwards the hot air balloon continues to descend to move downwards right uh, because it was moving downwards initially so let's take a look at that we have vi obviously which is 3.4 now we have delta t because we want the displacement or the height above the ground when the ball strikes the ground and the ball strikes the ground in 1.44 seconds so we just need a delta y, and then we're going to be able to calculate its height above the ground. So let's see. The acceleration is zero, obviously, constant velocity. So we can say that delta y is equal to vi delta t plus a half 
acceleration delta t squared so delta y so what we're interested in vi that is 3.4 well let's take up is positive so vi is minus 3.4 right and then delta t is 1.44 plus a half the acceleration is zero right constant velocity and then the time 1.44 squared so let me find a delta y so minus 3.4 multiplied by 1.44 plus a half acceleration is zero ah, this gives us zero so let's just forget about that and what am i getting let's see i'm getting minus 4.896 meters so there we go we can move to the next question right well we can't we are interested in the height above the ground i hope you didn't make that mistake right so the height above the ground will be 15 right it's initial height above the ground minus the height that it or the displacement the distance it has traveled which is 4.8 eight nine six meters so let's see what is 15 minus 4.896 10.104 uh, meters so that is the height of the hot air balloon above the ground when the ball strikes the ground okay let's move forward um 3.4 the ball was in contact with the ground for 0 0.2 seconds and left the ground with the vertically Oh, vertical upward velocity of 7.2 meters per second use only equations of motion to calculate the value of t3 indicated on the graph so t3 is the maximum height it's where it's when the ball reaches its maximum height above the ground after the first bounce so let's take a look at the information we have so vi is 7.2 meters per second this is given to us but we have vf also because maximum height all right and then acceleration we know what that is so we're interested on the time there. So let's find the time. So VF is equals to VI plus A delta T. VF is zero. VI is 7.2 plus acceleration minus 9.8 delta T. So delta T is equals to minus 7.2 divided by minus 9.8. Let me put that in my calculator. Minus 7.2 divided by minus 9.8 0 0.73 seconds right but that is not um the answer right we are looking for t3 right so t3 is equals to t1 plus the time between t1 and t2 and then this 0 0.73 so t3 is going to be what is the value of t1 1.44 so 1.44 plus the time it is in contact with the ground that is 0 0.2 and then plus finally 0 0.73 0 0.73 so 1.44 plus 0 0.2 plus 0 0.73 t3 is equal to 2.37 seconds 2.37 